Immunotherapy is a relatively new way of treating cancer and understanding it can be difficult if you've never studied biology. In this video, I'll try to explain what immunotherapy is all about and I'll focus on the form of immunotherapy that is used most as a treatment for people with melanoma skin cancer. Immunotherapy is just one of the many forms of treatment given to people with cancer. Some of them have been used for over a hundred years, like surgery and radiotherapy. Others have been used for around 50 years, like hormone therapies and chemotherapy. Targeted therapies are newer and are the subject of a separate video called Understanding Targeted Therapies. They include treatments like BRAF and MEK inhibitors. Immunotherapies are also newer and include treatments such as nivolumab, pembrolizumab and ipilimumab, which have become a standard way of treating people with melanoma skin cancer. But there are also other immunotherapies given to people with melanoma, like TVEC, which is a modified virus, and imiquimod, which is a cream. In this video, I'm going to focus on nivolumab, pembrolizumab and ipilimumab which belong to a group of treatments called the checkpoint inhibitors. Let's start with a definition. Immunotherapies are treatments that use the immune system to fight cancer. These are the questions I'm going to try and answer in this video. We'll start with the question of what is the immune system and how does it work? And that's a big topic and not one I can cover in this talk in any depth or detail. But there are lots of helpful videos that explain the immune system on YouTube and elsewhere if you're interested. Instead of trying to teach you all about the immune system, I'm just going to talk about some parts of it, the parts of it you need to know about in order to understand checkpoint inhibitors like nivolumab. I'll start off by talking about white blood cells. Just like all the cells that come together to form our body, our tissues, organs, skin, brain and everything else, white blood cells are incredibly small too small to be seen with the naked eye. As you can see here, a handful of white blood cells laid side by side is about the same width as a human hair. Another way of putting it is to say that in just one milliliter of blood, there are five billion red blood cells and five million white blood cells. On average, we have five liters of blood in our body. So that's about 25 billion white blood cells in our blood. And there are even more than that in our bone marrow, spleen, lymph nodes, in our gut, skin and elsewhere. So we have a whole lot of white blood cells. You might think that a cell, as small as it is, can't have that much going on inside it. But inside each cell, too small to be seen by the naked eye, is a whole world of activity with thousands of proteins whirring about inside and lots more sticking out from the surface. Also, there are lots of different types of white blood cells that perform many different functions. Some are best at clearing out bacteria from our skin when we cut ourselves. Others are best at fighting off viruses or parasites. Only a couple of them seem really good at identifying and destroying cancer cells. And these are our natural killer or NK cells and our cytotoxic T cells. They protect us against cancer in different ways. NK cells are programmed to kill cells that look strange and that don't have the normal amount of stuff on their surface, which often means cancer cells. And cytotoxic T cells do the opposite. They destroy cells that have things on their surface that shouldn't be there. But if someone has life-threatening cancer, a cancer that has grown to the point that it can be seen or felt or that's causing symptoms, if that has happened, then the NK cells and the cytotoxic T cells haven't been able to do their job. 
This is often because as cancer cells multiply, they recruit white blood cells that offer them protection. Also, cytotoxic T cells that get into the tumor become suppressed and can't do their job. And this is where immunotherapies like ipilimumab, pembrolizumab, and nivolumab come in. These treatments help T cells stay active and to kill lots of cancer cells. And they do this by attaching to either CTLA-4 or PD-1 two checkpoint proteins found on the surface of T cells. Here we have a T cell. I've tried to depict the fact that T cells have lots of different proteins sticking out from their surface. One of these is a protein called PD-1. Nivolumab and pembrolizumab are very similar to one another and they both attach to PD-1. Ipilimumab works in a similar way, but it attaches to a different protein on T cells called CTLA-4. So what's going on? How is it that by attaching to a protein on the surface of T cells, these treatments help people with melanoma? I'll try to explain using nivolumab and pembrolizumab as my examples. Let's look back at cancer cells for a moment. Like all our cells, cancer cells have lots of little proteins sticking out from their surface. If a cell were the size of a beach ball, these proteins would be like thousands of little pinheads sticking out. One of the proteins is called PDL1. When a cancer cell with PDL1 on its surface comes into contact with a T cell with PD1 on its surface, the two proteins fit together like a key fitting into a lock. And this sends a signal into the heart of the T cell telling it to stop what it's doing and not to kill the cancer cell. And this is where nivolumab or pembrolizumab come in. When either of these treatments is given to people with melanoma, the treatment attaches to PD-1 on their T cell and blocks access to PD-L1. And that prevents the T cell from becoming suppressed. Instead, the T cell stays active and it destroys the cancer cell. Hopefully this happens over and over again, creating thousands upon thousands of active T cells, all capable of killing many cancer cells. Ultimately, so many cancer cells are destroyed that the person's tumor stops growing or shrinks. And for many people, this effect carries on going for years, long after they stop treatment. Ipilimumab is similar to pembrolizumab and nivolumab, but it attaches to a different checkpoint protein on T cells called CTLA-4. So ipilimumab, pembrolizumab, and nivolumab are similar but different. Because it attaches to CTLA-4, ipilimumab activates T cells in lymph nodes and encourages them to multiply. Whereas pembrolizumab and nivolumab boost the actions of T cells that are already inside tumors and in other places, like the lining of the gut, or perhaps in the lungs or important glands. And that brings us to their side effects. Checkpoint inhibitors don't just activate T cells that are inside tumors and that kill cancer cells. Sometimes these drugs activate the wrong T cells, T cells that the body was suppressing for good reason. And it's these unwanted T cells that when given a boost by the checkpoint inhibitor, attack healthy tissues like the skin or the lining of the gut or the lungs or important glands like the thyroid or pituitary gland. And that's what can cause side effects like skin rashes, thyroid problems, damage to the liver or severe diarrhea or stomach pain. With quick intervention, most of these problems soon get better but even so, some people experience effects that need lifelong treatment. And as you might have already realized, this is a very different list of side effects than those caused by traditional chemotherapies, which tend to cause short-term side effects that only last for as long as the person is on treatment. Another thing to bear in mind is that checkpoint inhibitors don't always work. 
Sometimes the person's cancer cells are too well protected for T cells to get to them. And sometimes the person's immune system hasn't noticed their cancer cells and hasn't created T cells for the checkpoint inhibitor to boost. So there are some people who don't get any benefit from checkpoint inhibitor treatment. But having said that, there are lots of people for whom treatment with a checkpoint inhibitor or a combination of checkpoint inhibitors is helpful. And many people are alive today because of these treatments. The data in this table comes from one of the first immunotherapy clinical trials. It took place before nivolumab or pembrolizumab existed. People who took part in the trial all had advanced disease. They were either given decarbazine, which is a type of chemotherapy, or they were given a combination of ipilimumab plus decarbazine you can see that only 9% of the people given decarbazine in the trial were still alive five years later. And this was doubled to 18% when ipilimumab was given as well. Here are the results from more trials, trials in which people with advanced melanoma skin cancer were given pembrolizumab or nivolumab or ipilimumab or a combination of nivolumab plus ipilimumab. I've circled the five-year survival rate in people given nivolumab plus ipilimumab as this gave the best result. 52% of people in this trial were alive five years later. If you remember, in the trial with just a carbazine, that figure was 9%. So we've come a long way. It's important to remember, though, that the people who take part in trials are often younger and fitter with fewer other medical conditions than the average person with cancer. So the data from trials is often better than in a real life situation. Even so, the charts do demonstrate that for many people, checkpoint inhibitor therapy led to them living for far longer than if they'd been treated just a few years ago before these treatments existed. And of course, there are new treatments and new combinations entering trials all the time. So the situation for people with advanced melanoma keeps getting better. I'll finish with a quick summary, just to draw everything I've said together. I began by explaining that our immune system is constantly doing its best to protect us from cancer and it's white blood cells called NK cells and cytotoxic T cells that are the best equipped to destroy cancer cells. But sometimes the cancer cells have created for themselves an environment in which they are too well protected for them to be spotted and destroyed by white blood cells. One of the ways cancer cells protect themselves is by having proteins on their surface that they can use to suppress cytotoxic T cells. Checkpoint inhibitors prevent this from happening. They reverse the suppression of T cells and encourage those T cells to multiply. Ipilimumab boosts T cells in lymph nodes throughout the body, whereas pembrolizumab and nivolumab boost T cells in peripheral tissues, including those inside tumors. Checkpoint inhibitors can and do cause side effects. These side effects are very different from those caused by chemotherapy, and they can be severe. But these treatments have also greatly benefited a lot of people. And you can see that from the increased numbers of people alive many years after treatment, people who wouldn't have survived without checkpoint inhibitor treatment. <laughs> <laughs>